what happens when barbaric fundamentalists irrational religious radicals fanatics terrorists uncivilized uneducated mujahids take over the country and establish some sort of fundamentalist emirate and take away everyone's rights liberties and reason for existence what happens namaste answer is very simple one can look at the present situation of afghanistan and understand what comes with a fanatic rule nothing but a chaos disaster radicalism backwardness terrorism and end of civilizational endeavors we all know in august 2021 the democratically elected government of afghanistan was thrown away by the talibani forces and established their own islamic emirate of afghanistan as soon as the us forces left they seized the power and started to establish some sort of caliphate regime radical regimes which was similar to the situation of afghanistan prior to 2005 the talibani regime the harsh regime we have all seen in past 2 years what were their steps to get back to get back the nation towards the backwardness not towards the development a biggest disaster for any country now recently they have taken a decision talibani regime is very firm on that decision that they have decided to close all women saloons in afghanistan the reason is very simple beauty or the business run by women both the things must be closed their economic empowerment must be stopped they must be curtailed of every right they take the help of some religious doctrines to impose such rules this is nothing but a chaos and disaster when taliban regime took over as i said earlier they started imposing harsh islamic rules on women especially women remember this first they barred girls and women from high school and universities they ensured that women do not stand equal to men girls do not get an opportunity to speak their voices are curbed they are being used as animals a total or a tool to control and subjugate them by barring them from getting into schools and universities this was the first step taken by the talibani regime remember this today because of their measures dubious stance and some sort of dictatorial rule within the country they have been isolated globally they wanted to come out of that isolation but with such steps they will never be able to come out of the isolation everybody will boycott because of such harsh measures anti human rules and anti women acts then they banned them from parks fun fairs gyms they ensured women do not come out of the houses they remain within the four walls of the houses they do not get right to speak they do not stand equality on par with men they do not get the equal status with men then talibani regime ordered them to cover up in public same as what used to be in most of the middle eastern countries same as is the situation which we have seen during the caliphate or isis rule in the occupied regions of syria that is isil and we have seen such measures when radicals to take over the authority of the state they try to impose such harsh measures to control over women the best example is one can see the story of stoning of soraya you will get the context to it then women were made to leave news channels they were not allowed to do the anchoring they were barred from employment public employment even barred them from working for united nations barred them from ngos 
it's nothing but a caliphate, a neo caliphate or kind of a caliphate or let's say it is not explicit caliphate but it is similar to some sort of Islamic state caliphate rule. Functioning in the heart of Asia, we must all worry. Many Afghani activists raise their concerns on social media that their life is in danger, that in the Taliban regime they believe that their life is almost ended. They treat women for the purpose of reproduction. In pursuit of haram, they are making our lives haram. All these views are expressed by the sympathizers of Afghanistan or Afghani NRIs who raise their voice against the Taliban regime. And their condition seems to be very cruel and critical because if they raise their voice, they will be butchered in public with the harsh religious rules and doctrines. Look at the statements of victims who are solely dependent on saloons. In this report, we can clearly observe that they say, I wish I did not exist. They do not want to be named because they will be targeted. Within a month, all the saloons, that especially women saloons, will be shut down in Afghanistan. That means beauty has no place. Aesthetics has no place. Morality has no place. Women have no place. For the simple reason, they are being subjugated and their rights are taken away. By taking such harsh measures, by taking such regressive moves, it only destroys the lives, freedom and health of society, nation and future of the people. What Afghanistan urgently needs is a full-fledged revolution to throw away the radically Taliban regime. Or rather than dying, people should fight for their lives from inhuman Taliban regime and die heroically like Masha Amini of Iran. We have seen what happened in Iran. In the September 2022, Mahasha Imini, who fought for the freedom against the Islamic rule of Iran, she was hanged and her death, her killing, state killing, gave the new horizon to the activists to fight against the regressive, suppressive and backward doctrines, rules and laws of a state. Both seems to be difficult and nearly impossible. Expecting a sudden revolution or asking the women and activists to come out of their homes and fight for their rights and die hero heroically. Both these suggestions are maybe sublime but as of now they look near to impossible or it is difficult to expect them to do it. Who would risk their life? And some of them have already decided to die within the four walls without raising a voice. Anyhow, they are going to die. And this sorry state, we don't know what should be the solution as West have already left by making an agreement with the Taliban regime at the cost of regional security and the lives of people. They have ensured that you do not harm us and we do not get into your business. And they have left the lives of Afghani people into shackles. When the saloons are shut, shut and the people or women who are solely dependent on saloons for their bread and butter, they have cried. They have said that I wish I did not exist. I wish I did not exist. As if they are going to die they are going to commit the suicide or even if they exist, their existence doesn't matter because all their bread and butter, their public employment, they are not allowed to work in the public and are to make or are ensured that women will be slaves of these men. As some of the activists have raised their concerns that women are reduced to the level of reproduction only. This is the danger in 21st century when women liberation, women rights are spoken in high volumes just thumpingly across the global platforms. 
During the same time, we are also observing the total contradiction or 180 degree shift in the loss towards the women. What a sorry state of affairs of Ashwail Gandhara. That's why to empower, bring gender parity, equality and for the flourishment of everyone, uniform civil code matters. Any day in a democratic society, never let that democratic society to fall down. Never let any of the radical religious groups to take over a nation's fate. Never allow the international conspiracies to work against India in the name of religious freedoms and destroy your own societal existence, your own identities. Remember, that's why in order to bring about a parity and uniformity, to give the equal rights to the women who are being subjugated and suppressed, uniform civil code is a necessity in the 21st century. We need to ensure that society is prepared for that. We need to ensure that system is prepared for that. We need to ensure the right time is here. Uniform civil code must be introduced. India is not Afghanistan, but every nation must be careful, watchful before they succumb to such forces. And we must ensure as long as the democracy survives, as long as the civilizational endeavors thrive, that all such threats to the very existence of a nation, very existence to the systemic pillars of the nation, must not be destroyed. Everybody should fight till the last minute and ensure that no such radical forces are given preeminence because we have seen the situations in the Middle East, we have seen the situations in the Afghanistan, we have seen the situations in Africa with fanatic rules, with radicalism, there comes economic backwardness, social backwardness radicalism and then there comes the total regression of a state and collapse of a state and that state will be taken over by by the forces like terrorists mujahids and they try to control over the state by creating an environment of no freedom no rights no lives think for yourself why such laws like uniform civil code matters to any civilized nation any developing nation or to a nation which is thriving in the 21st century. We all know any day any radicals, any terrorists can take over the state and destroy the complete pillars of the democracy and all the functioning system of a polity. But citizens should be aware of the fact and learn the lessons from Afghanistan and ensure that no such forces are entertained within the boundary of a state and no such propaganda should be allowed to run outside the states. Think. Dhaniwad Jai Hind.